Hello, welcome to the Kennedy Center's American College Theater Festival. Um, my name is Colin Hovde. I'm the Artistic Director of Theater Alliance of Washington, D.C., and a very proud member of the thriving D.C. theater community. Um, I wanted to welcome you all, um, specifically all of the playwrights and artists from around the country that are here participating in this, week's, um, this week of events. Um, I also wanted to welcome all of those that are viewing um, all around the world and all, all around the nation view, uh, via the New Play TV. Thank you very much for your support. Um, and I wanted to tell you a little bit about this piece. Uh, this is a, the piece that you'll be seeing this afternoon is called White or the M Musk Ox Play. It's a beautiful piece written by Jonathan Fitz. Um, he's one of, this piece is one of the finalists for the New Play Award, the short New Play Award. Um, I had the opportunity to sit down with Jonathan a couple days ago and hear about some of his plans for the future and how his studies are going. And I was really impressed. I mean, he's, he's a nice, bold voice that's coming out in the American theater. And I think you should really keep your eyes on him. Um, I hope you enjoy the piece. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce the actors. First, we have uh, Rick Fouché. We have Jennifer Mendenhall. We have Michael Kramer, Frank Britton, and Nancy Robinette. Enjoy the piece. White, or the Musk Ox play, a play in one act by Jonathan Fitz. To my mother, I hope you can get past the musk ox. <laughs> Setting, the snowy tundra of Point Barrow, Alaska. Also, a pool in Florida, a suburban home in the American South, a small house in Haverhill, Massachusetts, a lanai in central Florida, a pier on the south side of Boston, the north bank of the Merrimack River. White, so much white. Shapes rise and fall. Light rests softly on the air in its particulates. Hazy, white glares. White noise rolling in and out, licking the rocky shapes that rise and fall in the haze. A shape appears, an object of tremendous mass, density, gravity, import. Furry, horned, grave. It is a man in a thick fur coat, impenetrable. Horns protrude from his fur hat. His face is so old. It has seen so much. It has been weathered by the white. The image comes into focus. Things pop out of the haze. Specks of snow gently falling. Rocks, a bridge, in the middle of which stands the shape, a man. Except he is not a man. He is also a musk ox, and he takes up the entire bridge. No passing. Crunch, crunch, crunch. An approach through the haze and snow. The musk ox does not move. Bond materializes in the white, trudging towards the bridge in thick snow gear. She carries under one arm a small steel jar. On her back is a large backpack. She stops to rest, panting. She sees the musk ox. The musk ox does not move. Move! <laughs> Come on now! Bond produces a satellite phone from her bag. Dive. Thanks, it's me. The bridge is blocked. Mitch fades into focus, but he's many miles away. Bond cannot see him. You owe me ten bucks. <laughs> what? Less than three hours before you called for help, I win. Is there another bridge? I don't know. Can you check? It's going to be dark in a little bit. Sweet cheeks, you've got an hour tops before we go lights out for a month. Yeah, Alaska. Great. So how about a little help with the bridge? What's wrong with it? It's occupied. <laughs> and then I ask... A musk ox. Just one? <laughs> One's enough. Where's the next closest bridge? 
I think there's one to the south back towards Imikbuk Lake. I don't know where that is. Okay. Where are you now? Just south of Point Barrow. Great. But where exactly? I don't know. Can you describe it? There's white. A shitload of white. <laughs> okay. That doesn't help at all. The ocean's right there. There's got to be another way to get across. There's a river, right? Yeah. Bring your bathing suit? Shit. Because uh, if you did, you'd have to show me at some point. Shut up. What? I'm just saying. Is it safe? Of course. It'd just be a little private modeling session. The river, you dipshit. Oh. Yeah. Less safe. It's still moving, right? Into the ocean. Yeah, I wouldn't risk it, especially so close to being dark. In this cold, getting wet is the difference between life and death. Please don't make... That's what she said. <sighs> Have I told you how much I hate you yet? Oh, you're too sweet. Have fun. Don't die. Be home before dark. Bond hangs up and looks into the river from a safe distance. Damn it. The white wind breathes and blows. Okay. You really need to move now. This has been fun, charming, but I'm done. I've got to get to the ocean. I've come this far. I'm carrying something very important. She holds the steel jar before the musk ox. This is the most important thing I've ever carried. I need to get by. Will you move? Move, you fucking buffalo son of a bitch! It's cold! <laughs> it's not cold. Some of the white begins to fall away in flakes like scales. What did you say? It's not cold! More flakes fall. They overtake the snow. They release the white. It chips away and reveals a swimming pool. 1975. A cabana of pinks and blues and Caribbean hues. A golden sun, azure sky, clear water, white pool, barn and a bathing suit. She is 11. She stands at the edge of the pool. The musk ox steps out of his fur coat. It's much too hot, don't you think? <laughs> he wears a bathing suit and stands in the pool. The fur coat and hat remain suspended, occupying the bridge. Come on. You're being a baby. Once you get in, it warms up. It doesn't work like that. Who said? Mommy. Well, Mommy doesn't know what she's talking about. Mommy knows lots of things. I know plenty of things, too. Come on. You're making a scene. I don't care. Bonnie Elizabeth Maywell, you get in this pool. I don't want to. One, two. I said I don't want to. Don't you remember how much fun we had last year? Aren't you hot? I'm fine. Don't look fine. Look like you're turning into a lobster. I'm not turning into a lobster. Sure looks like it to me. Where are you going? I'm not going anywhere. We only go on vacation before you leave <laughs> for work. You're a sharp kid. I know. I'm going somewhere far away. Do you know where Alaska is? Up north. Way up north where it's really cold. Like the water. <laughs> the water's a piece of cake. Should be no problem for a big girl like you. Can I come with you? If you won't even get into the water, how will you get up, you get by up north? Will you catch me? I will always catch you. Will you hold me up out of the water? Can't do that. Why not? I'm not strong enough. What do you want me to do? Walk around the pool holding you over my head like a, I don't know, a stuffed pig? <laughs> That'd be funny. You're getting too big for that. But it looks cold. <laughs> it's not cold. Just let yourself adjust. Come on. 
I've got you. She backs up. She runs towards the edge of the pool, ready to jump. As she leaps through the air, Roy appears in orange and camo. Stage four. The cabana disappears and all is white. Bomb crashes to the ground. A house in southern suburbia assembles out of the white. November, 2008. The musk ox is still visible, always visible. Roy reads off several blank white sheets of paper. He carries a holstered gun. This don't look amazing. It doesn't mean anything. You heard the doctor say stage four? Yes. This don't look amazing. Does he have, you know, is he able to take care of himself? He wasn't drooling and wearing a diaper, if that's what you're asking. No, I mean financially. Oh, I, I'm sure he's fine. Do Mike and Steve know? Yeah, we called them after we got out. Have you guys talked about a will? No. Are you going to? No, we're not going to discuss it at all. Really? Of course we're going to discuss it. But it's a little early, all right? He's still on two feet. I'm sorry. I, uh, I printed you off some reading material. Figured you'd want to read up and whatnot. Thanks. How about you? You all right? I'm good. You need to talk? You going somewhere? Well, I, no. I mean, I, I had plans to go hunting. Right now? Well, last week, right, weekend before the season's over. Right now? No. I'll stay if you want. No, go. I said I'll stay. Go hunting. What'd you say to your dad? Go, I'm fine. I'm here, now, talk. I'm not gonna make you stay if you don't want to. I want to. I'm here, aren't I? Are you? Yes. What's wrong with you? Stage four. If you don't get that, then leave. Look, I'm here. I am standing here right now for you. You wanna talk to me, do it. If not... Whatever, forget it, just go. You're acting like a child. Yeah, I am, but guess what? I get to! Are you saying I can go? Yeah, go. I can stay. No, it's fine. Really? Really, I'm good. Roy? Yeah? My cell phone if you need me. Roy fades away, bleed to white. Dad looked like a zombie. He'd lost a lot of weight. It wasn't like the life drained out of him or anything, you know? It, it's like he'd already sprung a leak. And now we knew what it was, that it was life draining out of him. And we just had to watch. We sat in the car for an hour and just sat in the AC. I didn't want to cry, you know? Didn't want him to feel bad. Like he needed to protect me, but holy shit. Holy shit. I couldn't think of anything else. The inside of my head was wallpapered with it. And I looked around, you know, in my head, trying to find other things to focus on, but there weren't. The walls, the windows, they'd been wallpapered over. Everything else was gone. It had drained out. And I started to get panicky, almost claustrophobic. I couldn't let it out my eyes. I couldn't let it out my throat. I just had to sit there with it in my body, pushing from the inside out. And I think Dad had to notice, because he started fidgeting. And of all things to say, he looked at me and said, Let's get some ice cream. The white gives way to a very different house. 1980. Vaughn is 15. She sits at a table with a plate of meat. The musk ox steps out of its mantle. 
this time dressed in business attire. No coat, perhaps sleeves rolled up. But, but only if you finish your meat. I don't like meat. It's good for you. It tastes like shit. What was that? It tastes like poop. <laughs> That's what I thought. I've got to leave in five minutes if I'm going to make my fight. I can call your mom, have her meet us at the Dairy Queen. Come on. Tell you what. You finish half a steak and we can still go. But meet me halfway. I don't believe in eating meat. What do you mean, don't believe? People eat meat regardless of whether you believe it or not. No, I don't think we should kill other living creatures. Well, who says? Lots of people. And if lots of people said to jump off a bridge, would you? Mom lets us leave anything we want. Well, that's not always a good idea. You don't like any of my mom's ideas. That's not true. I don't like most of your mom's ideas. <laughs> she doesn't make me eat meat. Well, she should. If she wants you to grow up big and strong. Ugh. And she doesn't talk to me like that. I'm 15. I'm about as grown and big and strong as I'm going to get. Is that so? Seems like it. When I talk to her, she doesn't remind me that I'm a kid. And I do? Tough. What? You heard me. But mom doesn't talk I don't want to hear about what your mom does or doesn't do. We're different people. While you're here, you're my daughter. You're not my friend or my buddy or... I don't know what you think she is to you. I'm your father, so damn right I'm going to remind you of that. Half of you... If you want ice cream, eat half. Oh, this shit. It what? You heard me. You can't use that word that way. You shouldn't use that word at all. It's not fair. You can't just come and go and expect me to be okay with it. Why can't you make up your mind? Are you here or aren't you? Easy. I don't expect you to be okay. I know I'm asking a lot, but I have to go if they tell me to go. That's how it is. Well, shit that. Bond disposes of her plate and grabs her backpack. And where do you think you're going? Away. Where exactly? When you like to know. Why? Because, point is, I'm leaving. Say your goodbyes now. All right. Vaughn trudges towards the exit. I'm leaving now. Okay. Travel by day. <laughs> Stay clear of the boys down by the Merrimack. Getting dark. And there's a boy down by the river who says he loves me. He's probably lying. <laughs> I don't think he is. I think he's the greatest boy I know. Much better than you. He actually loves me. I'm gonna go now. Aren't you gonna try and convince me to stay? She turns away and the world fades to white. The white Alaskan wind breathes and blows. Bond stands opposite the muskox. She speaks into her satellite phone. How's that other bridge coming? White noise. Mitch? Nothing. Bond scours her surroundings. Endless white. She bends down and scoops up a handful of white snow, packing it into a ball. She throws it at the muskox. Whoop! Another snowball. Another hit. Another snowball. Bond does not throw it. Want some? Tastes good. Bond eats some of the snowball. Not really. She takes another bite out of the snowball. The world fades to a lanai in sunny Florida. July 2009. The musk ox steps out of its mantle, dressed in shorts and a polo. It's much too hot, don't you think? No one. Was it the doctor? No. Who was it? I'm not trying to be nosy. I know. How's Roy doing? He's... He's Roy. You're spending a lot of time down here. Of course I am. How's he doing with it? Doesn't matter how he's doing with it. This is where I want to be. I always liked him. Good man. Yeah. 
Is he going to come down anytime soon? If he can get off work, and we know how that goes. How about the kids? They're both off at college. What about fall break? Fall's kind of far away, don't you think? Be here before you know it. That's one thing I never got used to down south. Back in Mass, you knew when the seasons changed. It was hot, then one day you woke up and all the leaves had dropped. Then when you wake up another day and, and you can't see because of all the white. Down here, I, I can't tell anymore. Nothing is separate. It all just runs together. It's not all that bad. You don't live down here. You want to keep going? Or... Yeah, let's get the sucker done. So, Uncle Wayne is going to be in charge of selling the house. Uh-huh. And you want the funds divided between me, Mike, and Steve. Mm -hmm. I think that just leaves personal effects. Who do you want to have what? Mm -hmm. I feel like shit saying that. Saying what? I don't want you to have to give us anything. I want to. I know, but it just feels weird. It is weird. This isn't something that people do every day. Or plan to do. Not something I ever planned on doing anyway. Me either. Let me see it. Bob hands him the document. It's very weird. This... This is what will happen when I die. Come on, don't talk about it like that. I can no longer function. I can no longer do anything. But this piece of paper functions as me. It's not me, but someone, you, your brothers, are going to look at this after I die Dad. and do what it says. The last actions that I will ever begin are complete. And I'm holding them in my hand. I'm not comfortable talking about this. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. No, you didn't upset me. I'm sorry. You can talk about whatever you want to talk about. I was talking to Roy. On the phone. He misses you. Wants to know when you're coming home. He... He called you? Almost every day. The world chips away to white. June 2009. Vaughn and Roy's house assembles. Vaughn is preparing to leave. Roy, I'll see you later. Roy fades into focus wearing a suit. Where are you going? Visit Dad. Again? Yeah. Is there a problem? No, it's just you only got back a few days ago. So? So he's not going anywhere anytime soon. Is it... Do you have to go down now? Yeah. Why? Are you for real? Of course I am. So how can you ask why? How can you possibly ask why? Are you so dense? We were going for dinner tonight. We'll do it another night. But tonight... We were supposed tonight to... Tonight I'm on a plane to Florida. I don't know where you are. Look, I just... I don't get why you can't spend time with me. Because you're not leaving. I'm not so sure about that. It's our anniversary. That's where I am tonight. Have a good flight. Roy? Roy? Roy, you son of a bitch! But he's gone, and all that is left is white. Another house slowly falling apart. 1984. Vaughn is 20. The musk ox steps out of its furry mantle. It's much too hot, don't you think? He's dressed in disheveled business attire, soaked to the bone. It's late. He sneaks inside. The light snaps on him, white light. Where the hell were you? I'm going to bed. Why are you wet? It rained. No, it didn't. It rained in the city. Not according to Mom. Shouldn't listen to your mom. Do you have any idea what time it is? I don't need you to remind me. Go to bed. You were supposed to be on a plane to Alaska six hours ago. They canceled my flight. Called the airport. 
They said it departed on time. The airline didn't cancel it. The company did. I'm not the Alaska guy anymore. Did you get canned? No. Are you going to get canned? I don't know. Mom called. Said you stopped by to see her. I wanted to say hi. Really? That was six hours ago. Where have you been? It's none of your business. You didn't stop by to say hi to me. You're capable, empowered, whatever the hell they call it at school. That's not the issue. You don't know what the issue is. I think I have a pretty good idea. Then what is it? If I say it, you're just going to deny it. I'll deny it if you're wrong. And believe me, I want nothing more than to be wrong. I'm going to bed. Don't leave. I'm not finished. I am. The musk ox moves to exit. Mom followed you to the pier. The musk ox stops and turns so slowly. She what? Yeah. Last time I checked, you didn't have a boat. It was hours past sunset. So, unless you've been taking swimming lessons. I don't want to talk about this. She saw you get in the water. She's a lying bitch. No, she's not. What happened? Fucking monsoon just appeared out of nowhere. Don't swear. And only you? The musk ox moves to exit. Bomb blocks. She said you went underwater. Go to bed. She said you didn't come up for a long time. I don't want to talk about this. What the fuck were you doing? It's none of your business. Oh, are you kidding me? It's so my fucking business, it's not even funny. No, it isn't. Because contrary to your belief, the world does not revolve around you. I do not revolve around you. I have enough shit. So much shit and you couldn't leave a fucking note? I didn't exactly plan on it. I came back, didn't I? Why did you get in the water? Because... Because I may be getting canned. I don't know. Because I miss your mother. Because you're never here anymore. Oh, please, don't you dare try to pass this off on me. I'm not. I'm trying to. All right, you know everything. You tell me what I was doing. I can't. No, you don't want to. There's a difference. Don't ask to know something if you're not ready to hear the answer. You ready to hear it? Uh. Let me change out of these clothes. Then how about we get some ice cream? I don't have to talk about anything, okay? We don't have to talk about anything. We can just be together for a little bit. Okay. And the world fades to white, the endless expanse of Point Barrow. The musk ox resumes its furry mantle. Vaughn rummages through her backpack, holding the satellite phone to her ear. Mitch fades into focus, still many miles away. I'm losing faith in your navigation abilities. Keep your panties on, or not, you know? Whatever floats your boat. Look, why don't you come back? I'll give you a massage. We'll light some candles. Eat some things. We can go tomorrow. I'll come with you. We'll take the ATV. I'm staying out. You don't have to prove anything, you know. Does it have to be today? Right now? Wouldn't be here otherwise. Yeah, but why? I got out of bed today. Congratulations. What does that have to do with anything? Mom? Do you know how to spook a musk ox? <laughs> um, no. Never tried. The gun should do the trick, though. No. Why not? No. I ask again. Unless you have a non-violent way of moving the musk ox, stop talking. I don't know one. They're pretty fucking mean when they want to be. It's weird that there's only one. They normally travel in groups. Yeah, well, we've got a loner then. What's the matter? Don't you have any friends to freeze to death with? (laughs) 
So, listen. <laughs> I was thinking, once all this is done, I don't want you to feel like you have to come back. We made a deal. Yeah, but given everything, I'm inclined to be merciful. You're sweet. If you still want to come, you're always welcome. But I don't want to force you here if you feel like you need to be with your man. My man? <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, I really miss that son of a bitch. Roy's voice is distant, as if through a cell phone. Hey, Bon. It's me. I, uh... Well, I've been calling. Keep getting your voicemail. I know you've got your hands full with everything in Alaska. I'm, uh... I'm worried about you. Wondering when I'm going to see you next. I miss you. The white fades to the lanai. September 2009. The musk ox again in Florida attire. Warmer layers than before. It's getting chilly. How many more ways can I say? But why? I'm 73 years old. If I go through with it, yeah, maybe I'll see 74. Puking and feeling like royal shit? Who'd want that? But what if they came up with a cure in the next year? Wouldn't you want to hold it out as long as you could? Come on. I'm tired. I don't have the energy or the desire to hold it out. I can't listen to this. I never asked you to come down here, you know? I didn't. I'm not going to let you sit down here by yourself. You've seen me more than you've seen your own husband these past two months. I've told him he's welcome anytime he wants. He can't. He's got work. I've got work. I'm here. Well, not everyone's as amazing as you are. Why are you defending him? It's not about defending. I'm just reminding you. This is my issue. I'm the one who's dying, you know. Dad, please. I'm just wondering who you're doing this for. What? I don't want your marriage to crumble. I don't want to see the greatest man who ever walked into your life walk out of it. He is, though. Then go and chase after him. That's what I'm doing. Silence. Sweet. Leaves and bright hues of orange, red, and yellow fall. Sweetheart. Why did you let me go? I was 15 years old, and I wouldn't eat my meat. I decided to run away, and you let me. Sweetheart, I don't even remember. That was negligent and dangerous and a very unfatherly thing to do. I'm sorry. I don't give a shit about sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want this to be about me. This needs to be about you. And I feel like shit that I that I left, that I'm here now talking about. No, I'm going to shut up. What do you want to talk about? You held on to that for all these years. Let's not talk about me. I want to know this 30 some odd years. If I had known. Why does it matter? Because it matters to you. It must have mattered a whole hell of a lot. No, it didn't really. It was me being stupid. You're not stupid. You're the sharpest person I know. I just don't want you to have to take this on. This isn't yours. It's not that easy, though. It's yours, sure. But it passes through me. God, it wraps me up in it. Like hairy arms. It pushes on me from the inside out, from the inside of this white wallpapered room. I don't know exactly how to describe it, only that it reminds me of when I left and walked down by the Merrimack. Sweetheart, you've got to let all that go. But it's you. I know, but all this stuff you're putting yourself through, it's not like you can keep me here. No one's strong enough to do that. You're sharp enough to know that. I have to go. No, don't. I'm worried about you. I'm worried about you.
I'm really going to miss you, Death. I'm going to miss you too, sweetheart. The world fades to white. The musk ox resumes its furry mantle. The woods outside Vaughn and Roy's house. October 2010. Roy fades in with a handgun. Are you paying attention? What? Well, yes, yeah, sorry. We don't have to do this if you don't want. No, it's fine. All right. Now, it's got a little kick to it, but it shouldn't be too bad. Now, aim for that target over there. It's heavy. Yeah. You're going to need to practice with it. Here, let me help you. He helps her aim the gun, holding her. Like this? You're too tense. Loosen up. I can't. I hate these things. You've got to. Or else you won't hit shit. Better. Keep your breath steady. And then just start to pull as you exhale. You don't want to know when it's going to go off. Okay. I can't do this. You can. I don't want to. Not now. You need to practice at least. Stop it. Get off me. All right. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. Are you sure you have to do this? Dad asked me to. I have to. I don't think he'd care. It was in his will. Yeah, but what's he going to do if you don't? Thanks for the lesson. Vaughn moves to exit. I just don't want you getting hurt. Alaska can be pretty rough. Thanks. You think... Never mind. No, what? Do what you need to do. What? You think we'll be okay when you get back? I don't know. When did you leave? Next week. Everything set up? Everything. All right. If, uh, if you need anything, you still got my number, right? Yeah. All right. All right. Roy moves to me. Roy, thank you. You, uh, this is a big help, you being here. Look beautiful. The world falls away. A church assembles out of the white. 1989. Vaughn in white. The muskox steps out of its mantle dressed in a black tuxedo. Roy still in orange and camo. And do you, Bonnie, take Roy as your lawfully wedded husband have and to hold in sickness and in health for better or for worse till death do you part. I do. Roy steps away. Hey, Bon. I'm getting worried about you. I haven't heard anything in about a month. I know cell reception isn't amazing, but uh, are you all right? Bon turns away from Roy. She turns to the musk ox. Till death do we part. I'm trying to get my boss to give me next week off. The musk ox and Vaughn kiss passionately. I love you. I love you so much. And I want what's best for you. Whatever that is. The musk ox and Vaughn undress. The world fades to white. The musk ox and Vaughn make love the blinding white. We do not see them. They are consumed. If you want me to stop calling, uh, I will. If that's what you want, I'll let you go. The world is consumed in white. Just tell me. Silence. Only white. Mitch appears in white. The inside of a cabin comes into focus. November 2010. I can't let you go. Just tell me which way to Point Barrow. No. I'm not about to let you go wander off in the tundra without knowing what you're doing. You could get eaten by a polar bear or trampled by a muskox. I don't want to talk about it. Not now. Okay, then. 
after we get back. I'm going alone. You hired me as a guide. To point me in the right direction. Uh, Consider yourself a very expensive walking GPS. Easy now. I don't have to show you the way. I paid you. Take it back. I don't need it. I've got guided tours out the ass. Put on that whole Eskimo song and dance about whales and caribou and shit. But I make bank. We don't get a lot of white chicks except on cruises or with some shitty tourist group. So then you show up by yourself packing a 38 in the steel jar. Tell me you wouldn't be curious. The gun. Do you know how to use it? Of course. Okay. How about this? I point you in the right direction. Once you do whatever you need to do, you come back and you tell me everything. How do you know I'll come back? I'm a very attractive man. <laughs> I'm married. That's what she said. <laughs> and I don't know that you'll come back. But I think there's a better chance of it if I let you go. Now that I've fulfilled my shamanistic advice quota for the day, <laughs> north is that way. Just follow the water. He points towards the musk ox. He produces a satellite phone. And take a sat phone. Cells won't work this far up. Give me a call if you need anything. Thanks. I, uh, I really appreciate this. Hey, 10 bucks says you'll call in less than three hours. Mitch fades, all is white. The rhythmic beeping of a heart monitor fades the world to a hospice. October. 2009. The open mouth of a dying man, the remnants of flesh and bone struggling not to fade into white. He's losing the battle. How you doing, Dad? Can you hear me? Squeeze my hand if you can hear me. The beeping is slowing. Please. He is gone. The musk ox stirs. Bond does not notice. She only holds his limp hand. To my darling daughter, you might remember a time when you were very young, when I came home soaking wet. I hope you won't remember, but I know you better than that, don't I? Hey, I made it. That was the day I decided to jump into the water. And you tried to catch me. Except you couldn't. No one can hold us out of the water forever. We can try, but we mostly end up looking silly. Roy puts a hand on her shoulder. She doesn't feel him. I'm here. Another hand. And we get tired. Oh, one is strong enough. To my dearest, darling daughter, I never wanted to be an obstacle for you. I only wanted the best for you, only love. And I think I succeeded, for better or worse. I'm here. He hugs her. Stay here with me. She puts a hand on Roy's. One hand remains with the musk ox. So now, when I have to leave, I feel like I've hurt you. If it were up to me, I wouldn't leave, but I have to. I won't let you go. How do you know? You can come with me to the farthest north, to the top of the world, into the deepest, darkest white. You can go no farther. Would you come here for me, to this place, to the white? Of course. I wish I believed you. That is where our walk ends. To my little girl. 
I have to go away now. So fucking go! Bond's voice shatters the world, bringing it to white. Roy falls away. The bridge at Point Barrow, the endless flight. If you have to go away, why don't you just leave? You have to let me go. But I can't. You have to let me go. But I don't want to. What do you see? I see the boy who said he loved me. He's standing across the river. No! What do you see? I see a pool. We're on vacation. No! I see a plate of meat. No! I see my father staring at the lights of the city slowly sinking underwater. No, you don't. Look at me. What do you see? My dad. He's wet. I'm not wet. He's cold. I'm not cold. Just let yourself adjust. What do you see? White. Why? Dad. Dad. When did it start snowing? When did it start snowing? It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's time to go now. It's time to go now. She raises the handgun. You can go. You can go. I love you, Dad. I love you, Dad. I love you. I love you. I love you. Bang! The furry mantle drops to the snow, covered bridge, leaving only a man, naked, frail, standing, unimposing. Bond crosses the bridge, moving past the man, carrying his urn. The man's gaze follows her, but it is nothing more than a gaze. She does not stop. She steps over the fallen furry mantle. Bond arrives at the other side of the bridge, sea salt, cold, and white. She opens the urn and takes out a handful of white dust. The wind blows through the white. It carries the dust so far away. Bond cries. Maybe she laughs. Another handful of dust. The wind pulls it away. The wind pulls the man away. Bond empties the urn. The man fades away with the dust. Bond is alone in the white. She exhales the breath she has held since 1975. Bond crosses back over the bridge. She steps over the furry mantle. Crunch, 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 and approach through the haze. Bond does not move. Roy materializes in the white trudging towards the bridge in orange and camo snow gear. Jesus Christ, it's cold. What the fuck are you doing here? You didn't answer any of my calls. I get no service up here. How did you? Apparently, there aren't that many white women who wander through the tundra. What about work? Screw work. Are you all right? I'm fine. Did you do it? I did. All right. Good. Yeah. Uh, are we... Uh... Yeah. We're good. Take a breath. Are you going to be all right? I don't know. Let's take it a day at a time. The white begins to fade into darkness. Sun's setting. We better get back to Barrow. And get home. I have to make a quick stop first. I owe someone a drink. Oh. All right. Can I come? No. Of course you could come. Does it always get this dark this early? Only once winter really begins. A month of darkness from now until January. It's the only way you can tell the seasons apart. The relationship of white to dark. Otherwise, it's easy for it all to run together. I believe it. 
up here, white, dark. God, it all goes on forever. It's so fucking cold. It's not cold. The white is all but gone. Bomb hugs Roy. Dots of white in the darkness. Just let yourself adjust. The white fades, and all is darkness. End of play.